Hello everyone, welcome to JGK Master Class. Guys, today we will discuss the combined spectral problems from the organic spectroscopy. The problems are taken from the previous years of BCU and it is based on UV, IR, proton NMR, 13C, NMR and mass. This particular video is based on the demand uh, and uh, if you feel that the video is really helpful for you to approach towards a combined spectral problem, do write it in the comment section. And if you are able to solve it with respect to this video, the other problems of combined spectral problem, that also you mention in the comment section. And if you have any other doubt related to this topic, you can write in the comment section. And please do subscribe my channel and share it with your friends so that they will be helpful as well. So let's start with the first problem. Deduce the structure of the compound from the following spectral data. The molecular formula is given here. IR and proton NMR data is also mentioned. Based on that, we have to govern the structure of this unknown molecule. So the first step to solve such kind of problem is if the molecular formula is mentioned, you first find out DBE that is double bond equivalence to find out the number of unsaturation present in the molecule. So this formula you have to learn for DBE 2 plus 2C minus H minus X plus N divided by 2. Where C is the number of carbon, hydrogen is H, X is for number of halogen atom and N is for number of nitrogen atom. So, our molecular formula is C10H12O2. If your molecular formula is having oxygen, for oxygen we don't mention anything in the formula. So, you don't have to write anything with respect to the oxygen. So, since our molecular formula is having only carbon and hydrogen, oxygen we will ignore, X and N is absent. So, we will mention with respect to that 2, 2C, two carbon is 10 here, so 2 into 10 minus hydrogen is 12, so you write minus 12 divided by 2. So, if you solve it, the dB comes 5, that means you have 5 unsaturation present in the molecule, that may be the double bond uh, or it may be the ring equivalent uh, or the triple bond, that depends, one triple bond is equivalent to the 2 dBe. So, uh, here we will see based on the other data which we are having in the problem. So, first is IR where 1780 per centimeter is given and if you have already studied IR, NMR and full spectroscopy then you go ahead with the particular video because uh, the prerequisite for this uh, particular problem to solve you should be familiar of the IR extraction frequencies. IR frequencies you should be knowing the chemical shift value under proton NMR and 13 C NMR and you should be familiar of the mass fragmentation. So basically if you have covered all the spectroscopic techniques then you can solve uh, the combined spectral problem. So 1780 we have studied that in IR that around 1700 if you have any peak that suggests that the unknown molecule is having the carbonyl stretching peak. 2985, so if you have any peak around 2900 or 2800 above, that is for aliphatic CH stretching. And uh, 1600 is a peak where we it governs that the unknown molecule is having C double bond C stretching. So, whatever peaks are mentioned in the data, we have to assign those. So, we have assigned it. For proton NMR, it is given 1.2 doublet 6H. 6H, whenever you get 3H, 6H or 9H, it indicates that the CSV is present. For 3H, it is 1 CSV. For 6H, it is 2 CSV. If the 9H is there, then it is 3 CH3. So, for our molecule, it is 6H. Therefore, the molecule is 2 CH3. Since it is doublet, so we know that splitting always occur because of the neighboring environment. So, this 2CS3 should have one proton in the adjacent so that N plus 1 rule is applied. N is 1 plus 1, then it is going to be doublet. The other peak is mentioned here 3.8 septet for 1H. So, as uh, we have uh, noticed uh, from the first data that CH is having adjacent 2CS3 uh, group and 2CS3 is having 6 proton. 6 plus 1 is 7. So, therefore, the CH is splitted as septet and the CS3 is splitted as doublet. So, CS3 you can doublet because of the CS peak and CH is septet because of the 2 CS3 group. So, this particular grouping is confirmed based on the proton NMR data 
and uh, the third peak is given for 5H singlet 7.8, which is a very characteristic peak for mono substituted aromatic ring. So, 5H, whenever you have uh, in the range of 7.8, uh, uh, 5H is usually for the aromatic ring and uh, it is mono substituted ring. So, the probability is now you have aromatic ring, you have this isopropyl group. The left uh, in the molecular formula is CO2. So, either it will be in this form. Or the other possibility is the oxygen is attached to the aromatic ring and uh, the propyl, isopropyl group is attached to the carbonyl group. So, these are the two probable structure which satisfy the molecular formula and the proton NMR data is also like based on the uh, like uh, the grouping. So, we have to find out which is the correct structure here based on the above data mentioned here. So, uh, first is uh, we will identify the structure based on the CHP. Here the CH peak is given 3.8. So, if uh, the CH is adjacent to the oxygen which is the electronegative atom, the chemical shift value appears around 4.5 value while here the data is given 3.8. So, if the CH peak is adjacent to the carbonyl group, you get the peak around 3.8. So, uh, among the two, um, it is uh, 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 like one step that uh, we may have the second structure. The first structure may not be correct. The other parameter which is saying that if the carbonyl group is attached to the aromatic group, uh, group then uh, the conjugation, extended conjugation will be there and we know conjugation decreases the carbonyl frequency. Here, so for ester group, if carbonyl group is attached to the aromatic ring, it should come around 1700. But our data is given 1780 which suggests that the carbonyl is not attached to the aromatic ring. So, that the conjugation is restricted here. So, based on IR also, it is indicating the second structure. Proton NMR is also saying the structure could be second. So, uh, first structure is not correct. Our second structure is correct based on the above data. And so, we can say the unknown molecule structure is this one where you have carbonyl attached to the isopropyl group. So, this is the approach uh, to solve uh, such kind of problem. I hope uh, you understood uh, how to approach the problem. Uh, we will solve one more problem uh, of the previous year where all the data is given UV, IR, proton NMR, 13 C NMR mass along with the molecular formula. So, basically when you have more data means more help uh, towards to uh, identify the structure. Molecular formula is given first step find out the DBE. And based on that, we found that it is 6. 6 unsaturation is present. In the previous structure also, 5 unsaturation, 1 for the ring, 3 for the double bond, plus 1 for carbonyl. So, total 5. Now, here in this, we will see UV data, which is 244 to 92. So, a higher wavelength says it is N to pi star transition, 244 is pi to pi star transition. So, both are present because our molecule is having oxygen. So, lone pair of atoms are there. Based on IR 2901, again aliphatic uh, symmetri asymmetrical CH stretching because we mo one more uh, stretching is given that is symmetrical stretching for aliphatic 2803. The 1708 uh, suggests the carbonyl group is present, 1072 is CH banding and 744 is the very characteristic peak for the ortho di substituted CH banding. So, you have to learn for IR spectroscopy that ortho, meta and paradise substituted. Uh, similarly, you should learn uh, cis and trans uh, di substituted alkene. What is the characteristic CH banding peak? So, which is very important in case of aromatic and alkene compounds. So, uh, and uh, you will be assigned marks uh, not only for the final structure interpretation, but also for each data given in the problem, you have to assign. So, for each data, you will be assigned marks. So for proton NMR again, 7.28 multiplet 4H is given. It means our aromatic ring is di substituted and based on this, it is ortho di substituted. So, 4H multiplet is there. 3.57 singlet and 4H. This means uh, this is aliphatic peak. Uh, and it is singlet means uh, CH2. So, 4H means aliphatic means two CH2s are there which are not uh, coupling with each other. Therefore, it is showing singlet. 
So we can say that two CH2 groups are separated by a carbonyl group. So therefore, you can assume it is a symmetrical structure, and so it is uh, the possibility of uh, this grouping is there. Now we'll see 13 C NMR, where the data says 214.5, which is for the carbonyl uh, ketone carbonyl. And then 137 and 125, 124 for the CH carbon, the, uh, the alkene or aromatic C carbon, okay. And 43.8 uh, for the sp3 carbon, the aliphatic carbon. So we can assume that our probable structure could be where you, if you uh, club the two grouping, and you just find out the molecular formula. The molecular formula says our molecular formula is having C9H8O. So based on this, no other grouping is present. Uh, so this is a probability. Now we have to find out uh, the peaks also. So based on this, you can see 4H3.57 and 4H7.28 for aromatic. We have to predict this structure based on mass. The data is given here. So first uh, we have to, whenever you are doing mass means you have to form the molecular ion peak, remember. So plus minus and this is a molecular ion peak which is M by Z is given 132 which is given in the data also. When you do the alpha cleavage with respect to the carbonyl group, alpha cleavage means uh, you will be having uh, the fragmentation at alpha bond and it is separated like plus radical and cation with the loss of carbon group here it is going to form the radical cation which gives you m by z or m by e 104 which is a base peak so basically uh, the loss of carbonyl will give you a base peak here and then followed by the loss of acetylene which will give you the M by E 78 which is again the characteristic of aromatic compound with the loss of uh, hydrogen free radical uh, it will give you M by E 77 which is more stable than uh, M by Z 78 and the 28 last peak you can uh, sign based on C2H4 cation okay so if this part releases a cation which gives you 28 peak. So our mass spectrum also says that the above structure could be the correct structure or the most probable structure for the given problem. So in this way we have approached this problem as well and I hope that you understood this problem as well and based on the above two problems uh, solution you can solve the other problems as well. So if you have any other doubt related to combined spectral problem do write in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends, like my channel and uh, if you have any other doubt in the, any topic, do write it in the comment section. I will try to make the video. Happy learning.